We've already discussed Fermat's little theorem and Wilson's theorem in earlier videos. Here are the statements again as a reminder. We proved both of them using combinatorial techniques. We're going to prove these theorems again, but we're going to prove them as corollaries of two more general theorems. Theorem. If the GCD of A and M is 1, then A to the phi of M is congruent to 1 modulo M. Recall that phi of M is called the Euler phi function and is defined as the number of positive integers less than or equal to M that are relatively prime to M. We will now prove Euler's theorem. Let R1, R2 up to R sub phi of M be a reduced residue system modulo M. Since the GCD of A and M is 1, if we multiply each of these by A, the list will still consist of values that are relatively prime to M. Furthermore, if any two values in the new list are equivalent to each other, then we can see by the cancellation law that they must have come from the same element in the original list. In other words, the two lists are both reduced residue systems, and so they must be the same list modulo M. This means that if we multiply all the values together modulo M, the products will be the same. Since each of the r sub i is relatively prime to m, we can use the cancellation law to cancel them out of both sides of the equation. On the left side, we have the product of a multiplied by itself phi of m times, and on the right side, we have just one. And this gives us the desired conclusion. Corollary. If p is a prime and n is a positive integer, then n to the p is congruent to n modulo p. To prove this, we first note that phi of p is equal to p minus one when p is prime. If the GCD of n and p is 1, then we can use this in Euler's theorem and multiply by n to get the desired conclusion. If the GCD of n and p is not 1, then n is a multiple of p, and both sides of the equivalence are 0. In either case, the congruence holds. We will now move on to proving Wilson's theorem. Again, we'll get that result as a corollary of a more general theorem. Wilson's theorem is actually just the backwards implication of this theorem. Theorem. The congruence m minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod m is true if and only if m is prime. Suppose that m is prime, and consider the numbers 1, 2, up to m minus 1. Since each of these is relatively prime to m, we know that if a is any of these numbers, that there exists a prime such that a times a prime is congruent to 1 mod m. Furthermore, by restricting a prime to be between 1 and m minus 1, we can assert that there is a unique element in the list that is the inverse of a. Now it may be possible for a to be its own inverse. If that's the case, then we have a squared is congruent to one modulo m. In other words, m divides a squared minus one, which can be factored. Since m is prime, we know that m must divide either a plus one or a minus one. And this implies that a is congruent to plus or minus one modulo m. Because of this, we'll remove 1 and m minus 1 from the list to leave us with just 2, 3, 4 up to m minus 2. The preceding calculations show that we can pair these elements up with their inverse. This is shown for the case m is equal to 11. What this means is that if we multiply these values together, we will get 1 modulo m. In other words, m minus 2 factorial is congruent to 1 mod m. By multiplying both sides of this by m minus 1, which is equivalent to negative 1 modulo m, we can see that m minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod m when m is prime. Now suppose that m is not prime. Then there exists an a such that 1 is less than a less than m, and a divides m. Notice that a divides m minus 1 factorial because it is an element in the factorial product. Suppose for a contradiction that m minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 modulo m. Then there exists an integer k such that m minus 1 factorial plus 1 is equal to k times m. Since a divides m, and a divides m minus 1 factorial, we must have that a divides 1, but this is impossible since a is greater than 1. This gives a contradiction and completes the proof that m minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod m, if and only if m is prime. We have now seen two very different proofs of two important theorems in number theory. What's interesting in math is not just that we have proofs of these statements, but that we can relate these statements to many other ideas. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.